In an expression like square root of x, we require the radicand to be non-negative. This means our rules for working with the square roots of real numbers also apply to working with the square roots of variable expressions. And one particularly important one is that for a and b greater than or equal to zero, the square root of a times the square root of b is equal to the square root of a b or the product of square roots is the square root of the product. And conversely, the square root of a product is the product of the square roots. Now let's multiply and simplify this horrible mess. Now, we might begin by noticing that since we have a square root of 2x, we know that x itself must be non-negative. And so we can simplify. We can rearrange the factors. So let's put all of the things outside the square root together, the 3 and the 5, and let's put the square roots together, square root of 2x, square root of 6x. And we know how to multiply 3 by 5, so let's go ahead and do that. So remember that as long as our radicands are non-negative, the product of square roots is the square root of the product. So square root 2x times square root 6x is the same as the square root of 2x times 6x, which simplifies. And let's see if we can simplify. So, we'll try to factor 12x squared by isolating perfect square factors. So, 12 is 4 times left over 3. And x squared is a perfect square. The square root of a product is the product of the square roots. So, we can rewrite this product. And since we started with a square root of x, we require that x be non-negative. And so we can say that square root of x squared is just equal to x. So square root of 4, that's 2. Square root of x squared is just x. And square root of 3, we're stuck with. And finally, we'll do a last bit of simplification and multiply out the coefficients. How about something more complicated? Well, again, since we have a square root of 12x cubed, the radicand 12x cubed must be non-negative. And remember, if n is odd, then x to the power n has the same sign as x, and x has the same sign as x to the n. Since we need 12x cubed to be non-negative, this means that x must be non-negative. And so we can simplify. We'll rearrange our factors. Let's multiply this 5 times 3 outside the radical. Now, we can simplify before or after we multiply, but it might be easier to simplify first so that we're dealing with smaller things. So let's simplify our radicals first. Square root of 12x cubed, we'll factor that by removing perfect square factors. Since x must be non-negative, we can say that square root of x squared is equal to x, and we can simplify our square roots. Square root of 2x to the 7th, we'll simplify that by removing perfect square factors. Again, since x must be non-negative, we know that the square root of x squared is just x. So we can simplify all of the square roots of x squared. And since we have three factors of x, we'll just write that as x to power 3. We'll rearrange our factors so all of the coefficients are multiplied together, and our square roots will be multiplied together. The product of square roots is the square root of the product. 
or multiply our coefficients together. And we can go one step further. The square root of 6x squared, well, that's a perfect square, x squared times 6. And the square root of a product is the product of the square roots. Now, since we know that x must be non-negative, so the square root of x squared is just x. And so we can simplify one step further. And finally, we have a couple of factors outside the radical that we can multiply together to get our final simplified answer. And one more example. We can take this product of square roots, rearrange our factors. The product of square roots is the square root of a product. We can simplify the inside. Find perfect square factors. And here we've assumed that all of our variables are non-negative. And because we've made that assumption, then the square root of x to power 10 can be reduced to x to power 5. And putting everything together gives us our final answer. We are asked to multiply the given radical expressions. We determine these products just like we multiply two binomials. Remember, when multiplying two binomials, we always have four products. Using the idea of repeated distribution, to determine this first product, we begin by distributing the two square root x, which gives us two products. And then we distribute the positive three, which gives us two more products, giving us a total of four products. This is equal to 2 square root x times 5 square root x plus 2 square root x times, because of the minus 4, we have times negative 4, and then we have plus, and now we distribute the 3. We have 3 times 5 square root x, and then finally we have plus 3 times negative 4. Now we determine each product using the rules for multiplying radicals. To determine this first product, we multiply the 2 and the 5 outside the square root. Then we multiply the x and the x under the square root. 2 times 5 is equal to 10, so we have 10 times the square root of x times x. And then we have plus. To determine this product, we multiply 2 and negative 4, which equals negative 8. This is equal to plus negative 8 square root x which is equivalent to minus 8 square root x. Now we have plus. To determine this product, we multiply the 3 and the 5. 3 times 5 equals 15, so we have plus 15 square root x. And then finally we have plus 3 times negative 4, which equals plus negative 12, which is equivalent to minus 12. Now we simplify these square roots and combine like radicals. We'll notice how the square root of x times x will simplify perfectly because we have two equal factors of x. The square root of x times x, or the square root of x squared, simplifies perfectly to one factor of x. This is equal to 10x. However, because the index on the square root is even, the index is 2, and the exponent on the simplified variable is odd, because x is equal to x to the first, we must have an absolute value around the x. This assures us that the principal square root will always be positive. And notice how the next two radicals are like radicals because the radical part is identical, meaning the radicals have the same index and the same radicand. So we have negative 8 square root x plus 15 square root of x, which equals 7 square root x. So we have plus 7 square root x, and we still have minus 12. This is the simplified product of the given radical expressions. Let's look at number 2 on the next slide. Again, we have four products. Using repeated distribution, we distribute the 3x squared, giving us two products. And then we have two more products when we distribute the cube root of x squared. This is equal to 3x squared times 2 times the cube root of x. And then we have plus 3x squared times because of the minus 1, we have times negative 1 plus. And now we distribute the cube root of x squared. So we have the cube root of x squared times 2 times the cube root of x. 
And then finally, plus the cube root of x squared times negative 1. And that will determine each product. For this first product, we multiply the factors outside the cube root. 3x squared times 2 is equal to 6x squared. This is equal to 6x squared times the cube root of x. Plus, here we have 3x squared times negative 1, which equals negative 3x squared. So we have plus negative 3x squared, which is equivalent to minus 3x squared. And then we have plus. Here we multiply the radicands, or the variables under the cube roots. So we still have the 2 outside the cube root, and then we have 2 times the cube root of x squared times x, which equals x cubed. And then finally we have plus the cube root of x squared times negative 1 equals negative the cube root of x squared. And therefore we have minus the cube root of x squared. And now we simplify the cube roots and then combine like terms. Well, the cube root of x does not simplify, but the cube root of x cubed will simplify. Because obviously x cubed is a perfect cube, this simplifies perfectly to one factor of x. So we have 6x squared times the cube root of x minus 3x squared, and then plus 2 times 1 factor of x, or plus 2x. And then we have minus the cube root of x squared. We don't have any like terms or like radicals, and all the square roots are simplified. And therefore, this is the product of the radical expressions. I hope you found this helpful. In this video, I'm going to talk about multiplying radical expressions. Before I even get going with anything, I'm going to say that there is one major condition for multiplying radical expressions, which is they have to have the same index, so this thing. If they're not the same, then you can't do them, and don't worry about it. I should also say that I've done an intro to radicals a video and another one about simplifying large-ish radical expressions. If you haven't seen those, I kind of go at this from a different perspective in my explanation. So if you haven't seen them, you might want to just like kick around in them for a second just to see if that explanation makes any sense to you because if it doesn't, there's a billion videos that'll show you this or how to do this. So uh, if this isn't the method for you, don't use it. So let's do some ones that can actually get a correct answer or it's possible to do one. In this case, it's uh, both square roots so we can do that. Now we can just do a little bit of combination work. So we're going to end up doing 3 times 24, and then I'm going to do times k squared times k squared. And all that's going to be underneath the square root, as long as they have the same index. Then we have to combine them. So in that step, 24 times 3 is 72. And then, remember when you multiply the, the numbers, the coefficients, the, in front of the numbers of the 1 and the 1, you add the exponents, so you get 2 plus 2, or k to the 4th power. From here, you kind of need to do a little bit of uh, split work. 72, you need to treat it in simplest radical form. So you're going to divide it by the squares. And I know that 30, 72 divided by 36, which is one of the squares, because 6, 7, 6 is 36, gives me 2. So I'm going to treat this in this fashion. Square root of 36 times square root of 2. Uh, on the other side of it, the k to the 4th, I'm going to treat this in a whole different way. I'm going to talk about it, instead of square root, I'm going to think of it as raising the whole thing to the one-half power. So I'm going to do this. And similarly, when I multiply the numbers, I added the exponents, because the little exponents are like the little brothers. But when I do an exponential relationship with the, with the number, so if there's a 2 here, I raise to the one-half power, um, to the fourth, I actually, at the exponent itself, I just multiply. So this goes k to the 4 times 1 half, k to the 4 over 2, or k to the second. And if you've seen the simplifying video about how to do that, it means that this is the term that actually comes out of the equation. I don't have anything left over. If I had a remainder, some of it would stay under, but I don't here, so it works out nicely. So my final answer, square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 2 is the nothing. It's square root of 2, so you just leave it. And this k to the second power, since it actually worked out nicely, 
pops out right there in the front. So that's the first one in terms of multiplying. The next one, if I remember correctly, is kind of a beast. And it's because it's raised to the sixth power. But before we get to that headache, I'm going to just go ahead and do... Um, 162 times 54, which gives you 8,748. And then I'm going to do uh, 3 plus 4 and get R to the 7th. Now, to figure out what the 6th power is, you could try doing the 6th uh, root of 8,748. Here's what I ended up having to do. I raised 2 to the 6th power, ended up with 64, and then I just attempted to divide this number by 64, and it gave me uh, 136.69, that kind of stuff. So that one doesn't work. It's not a factor because there isn't an integer when I do a division. So then I tried 3 to the 6. So I ended up doing 8,748 divided by 729. And when I did that one, it ended up working and it gave me 12. So I break this 8,748 up into the sixth root of 729 times the sixth root of 12. And then from here, I brought down my sixth root of r to the seventh. From here, I know that this is 3 because I found it out that way. I mean, really, check and guess is an okay method to use. So when I pull that out, I end up getting a 3 left over. This, there's nothing you can do with it. So we're going to end up bringing it down here in just a second. But before I get to that, I want to talk about this one right here. It's going to be r to the 7th raised to the 1 6th power. So you end up getting r to the 1 and 1 6th. Now, usually you wouldn't have uh, a mixed number here, but to me, because it's 7 over 6, that's where 1 and 1 6 comes from, um, I remember that this means I need to break it out into this, so it means that the, one of the r's actually comes out. So this r down here, since it's 1 and 1 6, I would bring down r to the first power outside of that radical sign. If it had been r to the 2 and 1 6, I'd put a 2 there. Now I need to talk about what's left underneath the uh, radical sign for what's still a root. Well, 12 doesn't do anything, so that's as far down as it goes. And for this one, my remainder here was 1, 6, so it's r to the first power. So, let me tidy this up just a little bit from a visual perspective. I might have made it actually worse. That's always good. That's what you want to do. So it's 3r times the 6th root of 12r. I'm going to check to make sure that's right. And it is. That's kind of a crazy problem. I um, think I'm going to do one more, because if you could follow that one, you could do any of them. This one, see if I can get one with that's some numbers out in front. I'll do this one. This one actually has a number out in front, which means I'm going to have to deal with that later. So what I tend to do at that point is highlight it in some way, and I'm actually going to use the highlighter tool here to do it. Just to remind myself to go back and not forget it. Now I'm doing square root, so I'm going to think, okay, what well, goes into 24, but before I do that, I can just go ahead and combine 24 and 30, and I get 720, and then 3 and 3. By the way, if these were different letters, this is an M and this is an N, you wouldn't combine them, you just put 3 and 3 over here, but in this case, they are the same. So into the 6th power. So for 720, uh, I divided 720 by 36, and that one works, but it tells me that's 20, which 4 goes in 20, so I'm going to try to up that again and do um, 64. No, 720 divided by 81. 144. Yes. So what I did at this point is I just kept dividing 720 by squares until I found out that this actually worked out. So I'm going to break out the square root of 720 into the square root of 144 times the square root of 5. Uh, for the n to the 6, or sorry, the square root of n to the 6, once again I'm going to treat it in the fraction form, so I get n 
to the sixth raised to the one half power, which is six times one half, which is of course three. So this one pops out nicely. Um, the only thing I have to worry about now is, well, I have squared of 144, and that's 12, and then I end up with n to the third, that all came out nicely, and there's no leftover remainder or anything, and then the square root of 5. Fortunately, I highlighted this, so because I, I have to remember, now that that's outside, I can multiply those two together, I get 5 times 12, which is 60, n to the third times the square root of 5. I'll check to make sure that's right. And it is, that's a good thing. Um, and that's it, really. Combine them together, do a little bit of uh, reorganization, and then, you know, it's fine.